and that's when i decided i want to pivot my career to be more uh, whole some professional not just stick to the technology side and that's why i decided to go for my mba um coming from that background mathematics and the quant part was relatively easy for me the problem was verbal and specifically reading comprehension the missing part which stagnant which made my verbal score stagnant for a while most of the people were saying if you are a reader then that's that's going to come natural to you if you're not then that's not pretty much that there's nothing that you can probably do to improve it that should not be like um you have to be reading comprehension there could be three types of passages and this is how it should be done i mean there has to be not just a structure horizontally there should be a structure vertically as well so hi everyone join me as i welcome vyom a gma 730 scorer who also recently got his admit to wharton Hi Vyom it's such a such a pleasure to have you here with us and i know that this gma journey and this mba journey has just been something that you've been fighting for for such a long time now and it's so great to see you come out on top so yeah. what all of this really what has been the biggest challenge for you um first of all thank you rida and happy to see you again after such a long time and that is excruciating part of mba application so really happy to be here um uh, you asked me the biggest challenge of my gmat journey i would say coming from a mathematics background i'm an engineer from my background so um coming from that background mathematics and the quant part was relatively easy for me the problem was verbal and specifically reading comprehension So I was looking for some resources studying online and most of the people were saying if you are a reader then that's that's going to come natural to you if you're not then that's not pretty much that there's nothing that you can probably do to improve it that much so that was one of the biggest challenge that I was facing to improve my verbal score specifically reading comprehension but I think that's where eGmat came into picture and then I could figure out a few things with you with the course and with other mentors too how exactly can I work on it specific point so that that was pretty useful and that's how i think i overcame that challenge wonderful so before we really dive deep into your gma journey and how you improve let's give the audience a bit of a glimpse into you so mm-hmm. do tell us a little bit about yourself uh, so uh, hello everyone my name is vyom i graduated from iit khadakpur in 2018 with a mechanical engineering degree then i pivoted my career to be a petroleum and drilling engineer i was in operations traveling across the world um, so i went into different operations in different parts of the country and then i realized i wanted to do something more on the technology side which has more power to help our operations making them safer greener and more cleaner as well so that's what i did i came to technology as a data scientist and recently i have shifted to norway which is the headquarter for innovation centers and i work in the hq as a data scientist as well and that's when i decided i want to pivot my career to be more uh, whole some professional not just stick to the technology side and that's why i decided to go for my mba wonderful so that first step of your mba journey is really just having that gmat score so that you can then apply to all those top b schools right so yeah. when did you really start thinking about your gmat journey and what were your first steps into that so i started thinking about gmat in around april time uh, so my first step was to figure out what resources i'm going to use and my initial thought was that i should be able to do it just by myself go through the online resources try to read stuff here and there in gmat club and just wing gmat but later i realized it's not how it works you have to have a structured plan and um give it a real um how do i say inputs and efforts to be able to score a decent score so that was a little bit of misdirection that i had initially but i'm happy that i could figure that out through my journey nice. nice so once you realized you needed that structure you needed those insights those inputs as you put it how did you really go about finding a system and a structure that would give that to you throughout your prep so i started researching about some of the platforms um, i started with one of the platforms apart from eGmat the problem that i faced with those platforms is that they were designed for more um natural speakers more native speakers mm-hmm. so they 
so the problem that i faced was that was not broken for somebody like me who is not a native speaker i mean we have to delve little more deeper to have a full understanding of for example structures how do you read certain things how you interpret certain sen- sentences and then you know more little more mechanical because i'm not a natural speaker so that was the missing part which stagnant which made my verbal score stagnant for a while and that's when i discovered egmat and i could figure out that they it gave a little more structure and depth to a non native speaker which was pretty helpful for me mm-hmm. so you would say that for someone who isn't as comfortable with the way that the gmat tests your english skills through the verbal section having mm-hmm. that structure is an essential piece of charting out that path to success yes not only just horizontal structure but it should have a vertical structure as well it should have the tip should not be like um you have to do reading comprehension there could be three types of passages and this is how it should be done i mean there has to be not just a structure horizontally there should be a structure vertically as well okay this is how you should tackle a sentence this is how you should tackle a paragraph these are the keywords this is how you should think about things so that depth is missing in in some of the platforms that i used got it got it okay so you realize that you needed the structure you came on board and now that you had this kind of skeleton in place what were your first steps into then your gmat improvement journey so the uh, immediately when i joined egmat uh, the first thing that i did was started looking at the structure of the course and the second thing was that i needed a little bit of personalization into my um, preparation and that was something that i was struggling with for some time so i thought maybe i'll reach out to mentors and that's when i met you and harsha and i was able to you know do that personalization how should i approach these pieces of eg mat and then how should i use um the scoring that is happening and then how should i where should i focus my efforts on so that personalization plus the structure of eg mat these two things were uh, more like making it easier for me to grasp more things and increase my score got it got it so you mentioned rc and we've talked about harsha who's one of our top rc experts so how did you really find that growth and that improvement in rc through the course and through harsha's inputs and what was the change that you saw from pre the course to post yeah so before doing the course the things that i was doing were more mechanical for example i'll read the passage um i mean i try to delve deeper into it but there was no one two three four five things that i needed to do to improve my comprehension it's just people whenever i reach read about it people say okay if you are a reader you do it otherwise not but then harsha and you you help me understand how those keywords are working how you guess what is going to come forward in the passage how do you understand the tone and relate different sentences then different paragraphs so i knew what i had to do i mean there is an it isn't just natural it, there is some things that you can learn as well how to read and you know how to connect dots which increases your comprehension so that doing a few passages together listing those things down keeping that in your memory when you read that actually helped me increase my um uh, reading comprehension and the score as well so previously before doing that in the egmat platform what i was doing maybe i'm missing three questions out of 10 10 but after that course i was just missing one or two eventually so it just increased 10 15% just by spending 3 4 hours understanding what to do or not to do so that was pretty great for me yeah mm-hmm. uh, so you on top of that critical reasoning was super amazing as well so i scored 100% in critical reasoning in in the actual exam which was not happening before so once you break down the passages as well the small passages and the type of them and you just keep on practicing one by one on the platform i could figure out this was my strength this was something that i needed to work on and then eventually that comprehension from rc also um translated into my comprehension of cr passages as well so it helped me both the ways great so you found that method to the madness and then you were able to bring about from what you thought was going to be your biggest weakness entering the gmat space you managed to turn that around to a strength and push another as uh, another part of that gmat the cr your critical reasoning section all the way to excellence really 100% there accuracy is just phenomenally phenomenally done so big kudos to that 
<laughs> yeah, I'm happy it worked out eventually. Yeah. So you find that uh, what do you say when you look at CR when you look at RC you mentioned this word comprehension multiple times and yeah. how do you think that having this structure and having this understanding of how to approach these uh approach comprehending these passages do you think that that's really the key even for non native speakers to get a great score in these subsections understanding the comprehension aspect of it yes for sure for sure for i mean for critical reasoning and reading comprehension i think it not only just saves your time but it also increases your accuracy so there are different ways people go about it but uh, people who are native speakers it comes natural to them but for us we need to break things down into you know more meaningful depth of understanding before we can actually ace the exam so i think yeah that pretty much is the key to understand and comprehend got it so this was the verbal side of things right yeah. on the quant side you'd already come in strong you had a quantitative background but did you see any improvements there as well especially because you are someone who uses analytics a lot so how do you think that you know you were able to make any changes to the way that you approached your quant prep and your quantability so my initial idea was that i'm just going to practice a bunch of questions and that's how i'm going to come uh that's how i'm going to revise that's how i'm going to prepare but with eg mart there was a little more um uh, targeted effort because once i was doing question i can only see i can also see what kind of mistakes i was making so on a dashboard i can see this is my accuracy in this sub topic this is my accuracy in this another sub topic that that kind of depth actually helped me narrow down where i wanted to work and then going back revising the formulas doing easier questions and then hard questions so dividing my eg mart quiz in in that progression actually help help me make those one or two questions even uh even better or faster mm-hmm. got it got it yeah. so i think it was about this time that we kind of took you into the last mile push program where you know we <coughs> worked with me as your mentor one on one so how did that mentorship aspect do you think help throughout your journey and what's the value of yeah. this program i think that was the most valuable part in my entire gmart journey i would say um initially it was it, i was very directional as i was like trying to reach somewhere but i did not have the map i just thought that i can wing it just definitely not the case so but then working in the last mile program i had that kind of personalization that i needed into my journey and i knew exact so with people who have done this before who have seen people like me coming to them you had a very good understanding of where what all things should i do so that actually helped me to get on track rather than you know just running in different directions without reaching anywhere so i think that was that was the most valuable um part of my preparation so a lot of what we did aside from of course building up your rc to be a weapon for you to use was also we focused on those test taking skills and really tackling that test mindset so how do you think your test taking skills and that test mindset changed as you progressed through your prep journey mm-hmm. so one thing that i found really interesting was instead of doing one subsection for example sc questions 10 15 um when but when you do with the book that's how you do it right 10 15 questions of same section but on eg mart i could just play around and make a mix back so now i have rc i have some sentence correction i have some critical reasoning which gives a real test like uh, scenario which i believed was you know a gap between what i was doing and what i should be doing in the exam so it's like it's it's a middle way of Mm-hmm. so that i think that helped me you know prepare better for exam to get into that mindset of you know tackling different questions one by one or in any order of that mm-hmm. sort so that was helpful as well yeah mm-hmm. so now you know you had all the tools that you needed to ace the gmat you've gotten all these verbal sections under control you'd made minor refinements throughout quant and you'd even practiced as a mixed bag you know different questions to really build that test taking skill as well so how did you feel when you actually wrote that exam did you feel calm like you could apply things or you know what was that experience like for you so 
when the exam started i was pretty much on autopilot mode i was just thinking of doing question question questions but after five or six questions um the preparation that i have been doing i think that probably kicked in and then i was able to you know calm myself and really cautiously thinking about every choice that i was making rather than just being on autopilot reading and answering answering on this so so i think that mindset before the exam or eventually helped me to calm down and you know really think about my choices which eventually reflected in my accuracy as well mm-hmm. so i think doing things like this doing mixed bag preparing yourself in the same time zone or, or same exam time and then writing mocks and you know doing that sort of 36 questions or at least more than 30 questions in a setting that that helps and you know you release that uh, test anxiety calm yourself and really think about what choices you are making wonderful and it seems like you made a lot of good choices because you walked out of that exam with that 730 you know a really great score to complement your really interesting background and that's where one grueling journey stops and another one a much much more difficult one starts right so i'm sure that mba journey must have been a roller coaster with a lot of kind of loop de loops but what do you really think was there the biggest challenge for you throughout that journey of applying to these schools writing these interview writing these essays t- getting these interviews taken all of that yeah i think the biggest challenge would be verbal i knew that all the other stuff um writing application getting recommendations should be fairly easy because i have been thinking about my mba for a while now so i had a vague big bit of idea what i wanted to do what my story is where do i want to go um my goals and stuff so i had more clarity there but the things that i didn't expect uh to be that much difficult was the verbal part so yeah i'm, I'm happy that it eventually worked out hmm. so how do you think that um how did you really work on that as a if you saw that as a weakness how did you turn that around so that then you could ace that part of the application process uh, one thing that i i think that i really did was just just giving it a go like i mean not quitting not finding out not getting burned from the amount of questions that you are doing the kind of test scores that you are seeing on your mocks just not giving up just keep on giving you know whatever you could into this exam to score as much as possible was was probably the key so now for a lot of my friends who are planning for an mba this year they are asking me that this is what they scored in the mock this is what they scored in the mock i just say them one thing just keep at it give your best and you know don't get discouraged by the the, the scores that you see it will improve if you keep on working on it so i think that's that's one thing that i keep on doing i just gave it my all to to score a decent score yeah decent score <clears throat> great school you know so i think now you have the entire package so yeah. now sitting with that word and admit right how did you really feel when you heard that by the way yeah when you like got it you got it 30 seconds i couldn't believe so it was it was a great feeling yeah i've been looking forward to this for a while and uh, the mba applications were stressful as well been thinking about this for a few years so finally getting that in your hand is 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 a great feeling i'm looking forward to the program wonderful so i know that i'm wishing you all the best and so is the entire team here at egmat super super excited for all the success that you're going to create both during your program and afterwards right making the world a greener place but you know It's been such a pleasure talking to you today and it's been such a pleasure having these wonderful insights as well both into how to approach your weaknesses as well as how to approach times when you falter and I'm sure that the people out there listening will definitely find value in this as well so thank you so so much thank you rida thank you for the program and thank you eg mat for helping me out in the difficult times right. so with that said That's all we have for today. Thank you so much. All the very best and as always happy learning. Bye bye. Thank you Rida. Bye.